tie there. Thank you, sir. You've been through hell. We just concluded a briefing about the Herculean efforts, and that's not a hyperbole, the Herculean efforts that were made in the year since this tragedy. But what's happening in the morning, the, the evening of, and the next day, and the weeks and following is amazing. It's absolutely amazing what this community rose to. You know, I, I want to thank uh, the folks of East Palestine to know. I want them to understand that uh, we're not going home no matter what till this job is done. And it's not done yet. There's a lot more to do. Well, the vast majority has been done. But we're going to stay to the very end. Every need is met. And uh, I want to we continue to hold Norfolk Southern accountable, make sure they make uh, your community whole now and in the future. And what they do not make whole, what they cannot make whole, what isn't made, the government will make whole. We have an obligation. We have an obligation. I can already see this derailment won't define you. It just uh, it defines you in a different way. Your courage, your resilience to this community, and the compassion that you've shown for all your fellow citizens. Let me be clear. While there are acts of God, this was an act of greed that was 100 percent preventable. Let me say it again. An act of greed that was 100 percent preventable. We were pushing the railroads to take more precautions, to deal with breaking, to deal with a whole range of things that were not dealt with. Norfolk Southern failed its responsibility. We know multi-million dollar railroad companies transporting toxic chemicals have a responsibility to do it safely. And again, Norfolk Southern failed. My administration was on the ground within hours, working closely with the governor, the mayor, the senators, the House members, community leaders, to make sure you have everything you need. My administration ordered Norfolk Southern to clean up the mess it created and ensure it was done right. That includes an executive order I signed to continue our priority to hold Norfolk Southern fully accountable for this disaster and any long-term effects that are able to be identified as time goes on. Not just here, but also in Darlington, Pennsylvania, where I just visited a few hours ago, an hour or so ago. Working with the state, we've tested the air, the water, the soil quality, deployed teams of health experts, provided emergency loans for local businesses. But it's not done yet. There's more to do. Today, I'm announcing the award of six National Institutes of Health grants to some of America's best research universities to study the short and long-term impacts of what happened here. That includes just north of here, Case Western University. So you'll have a top researcher with you as long as you need, as long as it has to go on. I also want to restate my support for the bipartisan rail safety lab bill. Senator Brown and Senator Vance and the congressman from Pennsylvania and others that require stronger protective measures when trains are carrying hazardous waste. Storage tank cars. We argued about this for years. They should be stronger. They should be able to survive crashes without exploding. Undate, uh, un undated brakes that meet higher safety standards. The fact of the matter is there was a lot of discussion ahead of time before this occurred about the safety of the braking systems of many of these railroads or trains. More staffing on trains so that there are more people to respond immediately to a crash and to do so much more in relation to the safety of the transportation. And it's an important that the Senate follow the House and pass the tax reform bill, which makes sure that folks who don't get hit with a tax, a surprise tax bill, for compensation owed them by the railroad. That's not taxable income to them. We've got to make sure that that occurs, that no one is taxed for anything that is reimbursed or received from Norfolk Southern. It's not right. I support the tax, this tax reform bill, and we've got to get it done. All told, we have done in one year what would typically take many years, and we're going to keep going. Like I said, your compassion and resilience of the leadership of this community and the people of this community, the courage, the 
of your firefighters, law enforcement officers, first responders who run into danger to save others. They deserve the care and resources we owe them to be followed and their health needs followed as well. Because that's what we do. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican or Independent. What matters is we're all Americans. Everyone. Everyone. We look out for one another. We leave no one behind. And we come back stronger than before. That's what you're doing here. That's what's happening right here in this community. That's what's going on downtown in your parks as well. You're now, your downtown's reopened and the parks are reopened. Students were frustrated. Opposing schools wouldn't travel here for sports events. But now you're playing home games again, finally. That's pride. That's also progress. But we have other obligations. And that's here is to stay here as long as it takes to get everything done and be sure no one's left behind. In moments like this, let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America, for God's sake. We have obligations to one another. There's nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. And we're going to stay here and do it together as long as it takes. May God bless you all and may God protect our troops. We have a lot to do. Now, let me turn this over to the EPA Administrator, Michael Regan, and he'll have a few things to say as well. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to join President Biden here in East Palestine today, a community that embodies strength, resilience, hope, and progress. Mr. President, thank you for your laser focus on this community from day one. Thank you for directing EPA and all federal partners. And thank you, Mr. President, for what you're doing to support this community. President Biden has never forgotten East Palestine. Mayor Conaway, thank you for being here with us. It is because of Mayor Conaway's leadership and tenacity that East Palestine is well on its way to full restoration. It's been a year since a Norfolk Southern freight train carrying hazardous chemicals derailed, releasing toxins into the environment and upending countless lives. For many, it's been a year of fear, uncertainty, and disarray. While we recognize times have been challenging, thanks to President Biden's strong leadership, this administration has stood shoulder to shoulder with East Palestine every single day since last February. Immediately after the disaster, the president vowed to hold Norfolk Southern accountable. And he committed to mobilizing a whole of government approach, using every tool available to assist the people of this community during the time of need. I'm grateful to work for a president who cares deeply about a community and stays true to his word. Under the president's leadership, emergency response personnel from the United States EPA arrived on scene within hours of the derailment joining the local first responders who heroically prevented loss of life, prevented serious injury, and additional property damage in the surrounding residential areas. Folks, it's been a year of action, and I'm proud of all of we have accomplished together since last February. The U.S. EPA continues to direct the cleanup in East Palestine, and to date, we've removed more than 176,000 tons of contaminated soil out of the community for safe disposal. We've shipped more than 43 million gallons of wastewater off-site. More than 6 million gallons which were treated on-site prior to safely being shipped off-site. We've collected more than 115 million air monitoring data points and more than 45,000 samples in and around the community using high-tech EPA aircraft, mobile labs, and stationary monitors. EPA's Community Welcome Center has served more than 1,200 visitors and received over 1,300 calls and is still available to this day to residents who may have questions. My agency continues to engage residents and provide information through our regular newsletter and community events. And every step of the way, as President Biden has stated, we've held Norfolk Southern accountable for the harm that they inflicted on this community. We have leveraged every enforcement tool available to EPA against Norfolk Southern 
to ensure that they complete and they pay for the extensive cleanup activities conducted over the last year. I'm grateful to our faith, state, federal, and local partners, as well as our partners in the United States House and Senate who have worked tirelessly to help restore this community. So many lives were upended, and so much has changed since last February. But I've seen firsthand the strength, and I've seen firsthand the resilience of East Palestine. And I'm certain you all are well on your way to bouncing back to be stronger than ever before. And now it's my pleasure to turn things over to Mayor Conaway. Thank you, all for coming. On behalf of the village of East Palestine, I, would, I want to welcome President Biden. As we pass the, one, the first anniversary of the trail and der, train derailment, the village of East Palestine appreciates the support from the US EPA, the Department of Transportation. We'd also like to thank Governor Mike DeWine, the Ohio EPA, the Ohio EMA, and the Department of Public Safety, and all of our state and local partners that have been with us since the beginning. Our village has faced many challenges, but as a community, we have shown resilience. We will not be defined by this single event Rather, our response to it and our perseverance. President Biden, your long-awaited visit to our village today allows us to focus on the things we agree with. Acknowledging this disaster should have never happened. Address the long-term health concerns and the economic growth of the village and ensure this never happens again to another community. Our goal is to be collaborative and proactive, collectively taking control of what we can shape uh, for a stronger future. This includes support of bipartisan railway legislation, federal tax relief for funds received by Norfolk, so, by Norfolk, I'm from Norfolk Southern, sorry, along with your unwavering support and assurances that our long-term concerns and needs will be addressed, which we have expressed here today, sir. We will not stop working, though. We will continuously strive to improve, not relying on just external aid, but on each other, and our own efforts to elevate the village. We are committed to seizing every opportunity for growth, enhancing our community's strength, resilience, through initiative and perseverance. Here in East Palestine, we are rooted in pride, tradition, and unwavering in our drive for progress and to determine the outcome of any obstacle. I thank you all for coming here today, and God bless East Palestine and the United States. Thank you, Press. 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 Thank you